Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be looking into Quarkus. Uh, we're going to see what it is and how it works. Um, if you want more videos on Quarkus specifically, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So Quarkus is just another framework that uh, helps you build and develop um, applications in Java, right? So if you've heard of um, Spring, uh, the Spring framework, uh, they kind of do similar things. Um, but the, the main focus of Quarkus uh, is to be kind of compatible with uh, kind of containerization. So if you hear things about uh, kind of microservices or serverless um, or just any kind of cloud stack, um, that's that's really the focus of Quarkus. Um, and what that really means is they're really optimizing for things like um, the size of the executable, the end, so the size of the bundle, um, and also like things like startup speed. So how quickly can we um, can we start from from a cold start, for example, um, from zero to the application being running and ready, which is things you need to consider when you're doing things like serverless or um, generally when you're in the, kind of the, the cloud stack. So um, on the on the website, you can see container first is one of the big big things, and you can see the um, there's a few numbers here on the site which I'm not going to get into too much in this tutorial, but these numbers are basically showing you hey if you use Quarkus, um, things are going to be much quicker, much smaller, etc. Uh, one of the things to probably point out is um, in this story, I'm just going to use the standard Open JDK um, J Java, uh, JVM, so it's just going to be just the standard um, JVM. But if you did want to use GraalVM, which is a, a different implementation of the, of the JVM, if you use that with Quarkus, then you can build native um, native binaries and native native executables. So what that means is you, you could just build like a Linux uh, executable or a macOS execut executable, which is what helps. Um, Kind of make them super fast and, and, and small, uh, but yeah, in this tutorial we're just going to use the standard um, standard uh, JVM, and yeah, let's get started. So with Quarkus on their site, they've got this start coding. So um, if you're familiar with Spring Initializer, it's very similar. So basically, it's a um, yeah website that helps you build uh, kind of the the foundations of your application. So here I'm just going to um, update the artifact name. So I'm just going to be Quarkus tutorial. And I'm just going to select Rest Easy uh, JXRS. So these are basically a list of all the dependencies, and you have most of the most of the standard ones. Um, and if you're actually coming from a Spring uh, Spring world, one of the cool things is they have a few kind of uh, Spring APIs or Spring dependencies um, that they've kind of ported across. So you can use some of the uh, APIs that you're familiar with, um, but in in Quarkus, which is which is quite nice. But yeah, so I'm just going to do a simple Hello World uh, API. Um, so that's enough, and I'm just going to hit download a zip here. Cool. So I've opened up the folder IntelliJ. Um, you might have noticed I, I picked Gradle as my build tool, and um, it works just as well as uh, Maven. So it doesn't matter which one which one you're doing. In this case, I'm seeing a build.gradle. If you're doing Maven, you're going to see a, a pom.xml. Um, but yeah, the general uh, directory structure is pretty familiar to anyone that's worked with Java. You have your source, uh, and then you have your kind of source sets, main Java, etc. There's a few extra things here which we'll go into. Um, in terms of kind of plugins, dependencies. Etc. So the main thing here um, is we have the, the Quarkus um, plugin, and that basically provides all the command line tools to start up the dev server, to build it, etc. Um, so there's a few nice things here. So in IntelliJ, I can just hit Gradle, and I can look at the Quarkus directory. So these are all the additional tasks or command line tools that the um, they give. So um, Quarkus Dev is what we're going to use to 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 run the application. And then in the dependencies, all they've started off with is, so we have, uh, we can essentially ignore this line. This is just um, setting the, the versions for all the other dependencies. Um, so we have the REST Easy, which is the one that we selected. Um, Quarkus Arc, which is basically their uh, dependency injection framework, which we're actually going to uh, use in this tutorial. JUnit uh, and their implementation, which adds, which adds a few um, uh, annotations to help with testing. And then REST Assured, which is basically uh, a library that helps you um, test APIs, right? And this isn't actually anything to do with Quarkus specifically. They just happen to have an integration, and I guess it's their recommended approach. Um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is, is boilerplate. Um, yeah, so that's the, the kind of build. So let's look at the structure of the application itself. So within the main, uh, again, pretty standard stuff. Uh, resources, you have your application of properties for uh, additional properties. Um, you have an index HTML, which is, we're going to see that in a moment. and you have Java with a resource, which is just uh, an endpoint, which is going to return hello. So this is a, 
um, endpoint that lives at slash rest easy slash hello. Um, it's a get endpoint, produces text. Uh, and then we have this uh, Docker directory, which is probably something you're not familiar with seeing, but they've just provided us with a few Docker files to um, to build the application. So they're quite useful and they've got instructions on how to, to use them, etc. So we'll, we'll see that in action in a moment. Um, yeah, and then we just have the, the test. So I'm just gonna hit Corcus dev here um, to start the dev server. And we're just gonna go over to localhost 8080 to see that running. So as soon as we go to localhost 80, this is the index.html file, but we can see that they have the rest the easy hello endpoint there, which just returns hello. Um, and the cool thing uh, with their dev server is I can just change this to hello world. If I come back here, refresh, um, it's kind of got this uh, live reload thing, which is which is pretty um, pretty cool. A lot of people are very familiar with that, but that's not the most common thing in uh, the Java world, um, which is quite nice. Cool. So um, back to here. So we've got our test as well. So let's have a quick look at that. Jump into the test. So this is their test file, and this is all pretty standard stuff. Um, you can see that they've got the uh, Quarkus test annotation, and this basically just spins up the entire application for you to test. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's really the, the main difference uh, when we're kind of dealing with the, the, the basics here. This is just standard uh, rest assured with uh, JUnit 5. So rest assured is gonna um, make an actual API call to the running application. You can see that we've not actually specified the URL here and that's just because uh, the Quarkus test I think is injecting that for us. Um, so yeah, this is all pretty standard. And of course, my one would say, I think, uh, hello world. And yeah, we could run that and that's just gonna um, just run like any other test. Cool. So. Um, yeah, the final thing we can look at is just how to, to build the application. Um, so I'm just going to go over to Gradle here, and I'm just going to do a Quarkus build. So by default, it's just going to build a, a standard jar file, um, and this is where you'd typically pass in additional arguments to build a native file, um, or whichever whichever you want. And what I want to do is, this is just going to spit out a standard jar file like, uh, like you'd usually see in Spring or other kind of Java applications. Um, and we're just going to look at the, I guess, the Docker files here, uh, specifically the Docker file JVM. So we have one for native, one for the standard Java, and then we have this fast one, which, um, as far as I can see, it just um, splits out the build directory into, into multiple directories, so it doesn't need to rebuild it every time. Um, but yeah, we're just going to go into the standard uh, Docker file. It's actually got all the instructions of how to, to build it here as well, so you can take a look at that. So I'm just going to do, um, so I build the image. Here it says name and package, which is the same as, as Gradle build. Um, and then you would do a yeah, Docker build. Um, I think I can just uh, copy and paste this. Docker build, and it shouldn't take that long because I've got everything built out. I'm gonna zoom in a bit here, zoom out a bit so you can see everything. Um, so yeah, it's copying the, the jar files, etc. And then if I stop the main one here, I can run Docker run. Um, there we go. So yeah, just to explain actually what's going on here. The Docker build here, uh, we're building an image, we're passing in the JVM file. So that's saying build it using this Docker file and we're just giving that a tag of Quarkus uh, tutorial and we're just saying build in this in this current directory. And the Docker run here, we're just saying Docker run it, run it in interactive mode um, where you can see, uh, and it just lets you see all the logs, uh, I'm assuming. Um, remove the image or the container once I'm once I'm done with it and then we're just binding ports 8080 from the container to the host and we're giving it yeah the um the same tag to tell it which one to run so if I run that command we can see that um yeah there we go it started and yeah if I go back here and I refresh this guy everything is as normal um yeah, and I think that's that's pretty much it. So hopefully that, that covers the, the very basics and gives you an intro into how Quarkus works or, or what it is. Um, like I said, if you want to see more tutorials on Quarkus building out something a bit more than, you know, the basic Hello World, uh, let me know in the comments below and then uh, I'll be happy to do that. So thanks uh, a lot for watching and have a good day.